If you're putting your home on the market this spring, there's more to worry about than just price. You also have to position it well. Here to talk about positioning is Eldad Moraro of Long & Foster. So what is positioning? I like to think that I know a, a fair bit about the real estate market. I've never really heard positioning as a specific term. Obviously, generally, we know what it is. But how do you specifically position a house? Right. So it is a topic that I spend a little more time than most agents on. But uh, it's a combination of pricing and marketing relative to the competition. So we talked about pricing a few weeks ago. But just to finish up, on that particular topic as it relates to positioning is that you typically you pick your price and you don't really go on the market for another two, three weeks. And all it takes is two, three, four other listings to come on the market during that time to completely throw off the, the concept of the price that you had picked originally. So you need to go out there, look at those active listings and maybe revisit the pricing. Sometimes you need to price higher, other times lower. How often do you advise people to kind of stay the course on the pricing that they've established and flip side of the coin, you don't want people jumping around on prices because other things are coming on and off the market. So where do you find that happy medium? Well, I set the expectation up front that you've got to be uh, open to uh, tweaking the price. It's not that you're going to jump to a whole other price point, but uh, it may require a little tweaking. So then the other piece is the marketing. And when I say that, the marketing, the message you put out there is very important. So for example, I see this all the time, people who have three real bedrooms and have a fourth room that they use as a bedroom, but isn't truly a bedroom, but go ahead and market themselves as a four-bedroom house. And at that point, you're competing with other houses that are truly four bedrooms, and you're not doing yourself any favor. You'd be better off competing with other three-bedroom homes and saying, we have a bonus room that perhaps you could use as a bedroom, office, etc., and it's much better positioning. But once again, when people get into the whole marketing of their house, they try to embellish as much as possible. They try to trumpet it up as much as they can. Aren't they telling you, well, I'm supposed to exaggerate, and then I can tell them it's not really a bedroom when they come out to see the house? <laughs> well, I see that all the time. And what you got to think about is the fact that you are setting expectations for the buyers, not only when they show up, but that's going to carry through the actual contract through to the home inspection. So I'll, you know, I'll give you an example okay. if you want to hear one. Uh, if you are marketing your house as a fully renovated home, uh, the buyer is going to show up with that expectation. So first of all, if it isn't truly a renovated home, you've just disappointed the buyer and they're just going to leave very annoyed. But if you did, did indeed renovate your house and they do go under contract, they're going to hold your house to a higher standard than a house that was marketed, let's say, to be you know a little bit exaggerated here, as a fixer-upper. So if you said, hey, this is a fully renovated house, they do the home inspection, and they find things, they're going to expect you to fix them because you are the one who marketed and positioned it that way. You don't want to uh, over-promise and under-deliver. Exactly. In that regard. Exactly. W what about the comparables we were talking about earlier? Um, just how often do they pop on the market while another house is on there that forces you to kind of radically revisit the position of your home? Great question. You know, the truth is that it's different throughout the year. We're in the spring market right now. Uh, listings are coming on weekly, daily. So this time of year, you really do need to stay on top of things. In the middle of the summer, when a lot of people are on vacation, chances are that there won't be as many new homes hitting the market. So you always have to stay vigilant, but the likelihood of having a new competitor on the market show up on a daily basis goes down in the off season, if you will. Eldad Moraro of Long & Foster, thanks very much for being with us. Money News coming up next.